On a cold and frosty and unpleasant day in January, as we've just had, uh, one of the jobs that really does need doing each year is to sort out your planting records of exactly what you've planted in the last year, what may have subsequently died in, from plantings in previous years, and to get your records up to date. Because as we all know, labels fade and memories fade even more quickly than labels. And if you're planting on a large scale in a woodland garden, you do need to keep uh, quite serious planting records because you hope that in the future you'll produce specimen trees, maybe even record-sized trees, that people will want to know and appreciate, and they want to understand the history of when they were planted and where. From the point of view of any gardener, you also need to know the things that frequently die with you, so that you can either find a reason why they die, because you planted them in the wrong place, or because they're simply not suited to the environment that you have. And we find that with quite a number of rhododendron species, which simply don't like our high rainfall in Cornwall. So planting records can tell you quite a lot of things. Um, at Cahays, we've got planting records in my great-grandfather's handwritten notebooks going back to 1897. And since Jamie Parsons took over as head gardener here in 1996, we've got a bit more sophisticated and we've got our planting records uh, on a computer. And I'm actually holding the planting records since 1996. And if I can just show you a little bit of how these work. The garden is divided up into uh, 29 separate areas, um, which are based on pathways and geography. Uh, there's nothing particularly sophisticated about that, but um, it serves as a rough guide to make sense of what would otherwise be an enormous list. And then we move into each particular area and I'm now in area four which is a key planting area and what we've got listed here in our computer records are the the plants, the date when they were planted and an indication of where they are in relation to other plants so that we can actually as they've grown work out what, what's what. And on these year-by-year -year plant lists we can record um, who the collectors of certain particular species were, where the plants came from, and where we get into larger planting areas we can draw, draw in a little plan and that helps us find things. And we can also mark on these little plans plants which have subsequently died and mark in, perhaps in pencil even when we're standing there, those plants which have been used to replace plants that have died. And gradually you build up a comprehensive record. You know, in this area four we started in 1997 and we go on up now to 2017 and we are at the moment working up um, the last couple of years planting which we've done in pencil form on the ground and are now um, getting this onto the computer and updating our records. And the easiest way to show you um, how we go about this is to actually go into one of the larger planting areas which has been planted in the last three years, the Isla Rose Plantation, and just show you what we mean by labelling in the context of these plant records. So here we are at the Isla Rose Plantation, which was put in in the autumn of 2017 and the spring of 2018. Uh, in celebration of the arrival of my first granddaughter, Isla Rose. And if we take a look across this new planting, we can see that it's probably about an acre in size and that we've started with a number of specimen trees which three years on are beginning to take shape in what is a fairly exposed situation. There'll be plenty of time in later years to infill with other smaller growing shrubs. Uh, but at the moment we've got um, 
a large number of plants and the planting policy is really as follows. I mean when when we're originally planting a magnolia like this there would be a nursery plant label on the magnolia which would be made of plastic. Um, that'll blow away, fade or snap off in the wind quite quickly so immediately after planting we put on a, a, a scratch label and these are labels scratched with a with a knife-like scratcher so that they don't fade and they don't blow away and we attach that label to the surround of the plant or to the plant itself <coughs> and then we try and put a rather smart and hopefully more long-lasting label there to explain to the public what, what the plant is and to make, make the area more interesting until things grow on and try to flower. But actually in 15 or 20 years time uh, a lot of these labels will no doubt have been blown away or faded or got damaged by falling trees or whatever and we need to have a master plan of what is actually here. So shortly after planting we prepared um, a really quite detailed planting list of everything that was planted here and in fact there were about 120 plants put in this planting area and what we then produced was a very much more detailed planting plan uh, numbering the plants and actually you put it, it all goes together a bit, a bit like that so that we marked on the plan some existing plants and we've marked uh, new things and we've given an indication of where the tracks are so you in theory can work out what's what <clears throat> and then each year we can mark on anything that's died and quite a few things have died and one or two things have been eaten by deer but we've got a baseline and a base plan and a planting list which is all on the computer so it can easily be amended we can easily write on individual details about individual plants and we've actually got a comprehensive planting record for the future and if you try and look through this planting area and envisage what it might look like in 20, 30, 50 or even 70 years time you can see how important it is to have started off with a decent plan and a properly produced plant record system and actually however small your herbaceous border is or however large your plant woodland planting might be that record helps you to remember the plant names as we know you always remember a plant's name because of where it is rather than what it is and when you see the same plant in somebody else's garden and not in the position you remember it your brain takes a while to work out what's where and the same is true in large planting areas you think you know what you put where but without a planting plan you can often make mistakes and propagate the wrong thing or misinform visitors when they're coming around about what is what bit of a chore quite a nice chore to do on a with a beside a roaring fire on an icy cold frozen day and something to fill up the time and think about nicer days in March and April and May when everything will be flowering and you can enjoy it properly.